I'm not. I'm fine. Just put it down on the counter. We'll wipe it up. Chris, you got cups. What did I do? Don't pay attention all that. And I slammed the door on my face. You often hear people say it's hard to find good workers. Well, the people in today's video are probably the reason that saying exists in the first place. Whether they decide to steal from the job, get drunk and make a mess, or even do drugs before operating on people, these are the kind of people nobody in their right mind would want to employ. But somehow, they got the job and managed to get arrested while doing it. Make sure you watch to the very end. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. We'll start off in Flagler County, where someone had alerted the school administration that their bus driver appeared to be intoxicated. Even though they radioed the driver to pull over, he blatantly refused. The driver continued dropping kids off until a supervisor caught up with him. By that time, the sheriff's deputies got involved as well. So yeah, so we were notified um, after we came out of our meeting that, hey, uh, once the other supervisor realized he took the wrong bus, um, and Doreen came around the corner, she was like, oh, well, kind of smelled like alcohol. And so we all lost our because yeah, that's something you probably should have stopped stop before he got off. Long time a lot. So um, I immediately dispatched my supervisor to go to the bus. We had called him on the radio and told him you need to pull over to a safe location, whatever, whatever. He refused. He wouldn't do it. Was he being like belligerent on the phone? Well, he, he yeah. Why? Why? You and him Why? on the radio. Why? I got on the radio and said, you need to pull the bus over immediately. And it's nothing to be alarmed about. We're coming to meet the bus. It's kept going. And so once they got behind him, he still refused to stop. The school people acted efficiently and stopped the driver as soon as they possibly could. Still, the one person I'm having an issue with is Doreen. Not sure who she is, but the way she casually allowed a drunken man to sit on a bus and carry a bunch of kids all over town, and she didn't bother telling anyone until the meeting was over, that just doesn't sit well with me. At the time of the conversation you just saw, the driver was in the ambulance being examined by the medics, but not for long. So he got this bus from the lot, went to the school, picked up the kids, and then he was doing his route here, and that's when everything... He was on his route down. He dropped off some down there. Then he came here. I was able, because I tried to catch him down there, mm -hmm. but he wouldn't stop. Uh, Robert, parent cues. Hey, this guy just ran out of the ambulance. Where's he at? I have no idea. Well, this just became more interesting. It seems that the drunken driver just decided he wasn't going to do this and made a run for it. Luckily, he wasn't able to get very far, and the officers quickly caught up to him. Delta 313, I'm going to have one detained. I didn't do anything. All right. Well, when the responding officer gets here, all right? Yeah. 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 You can talk to him. Okay, right. hold on. My wife is hurting me. How am I hurting you, sir? Hurting me. I'm putting handcuffs on you. Me. I'm not hurting you. I didn't do anything. Okay. Sir, you're hurting me. How am I hurting you, sir? You're hurting me. Can you explain how? Yes, you're hurting my, my arm. Not only is our inebriated driver attempting to play the victim, but he's also playing dumb. As a professional driver, he surely knows the regulations when it comes to driving under the influence, yet he insists on pretending he has no idea why he's being detained. Sir, stop yes, resisting. Like okay, All right, I understand, but what did I do? We'll explain everything in just a second. All right, okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. I didn't do anything. Can I, can I go home? No, one second. What did I do, sir? I'm trying to kill you officer. Why'd you jump out of the deck and have it? I drove the school bus. I understand that. Okay. Why'd you jump, why'd you jump I out? I didn't jump out of the school bus, okay? I just jumped out because I was scared, okay? I don't, I'm not going to lie to any of you. I didn't say you. No, I'm not going to lie. You know, you see me, you see me. I didn't do anything wrong. I love my wife. My wife is home. She's worried about me. I have five kids. I have five yet. children. It's funny that he brings up having kids because I'm sure they'll be very disappointed when they see this clip. But that's what alcohol does to you. It distorts your mind until you can't think straight anymore. Clearly, this man does not acknowledge the ramifications of his actions and how dangerous the situation really was. And the more he talks, the less it's making any sense. I'm not, I'm not, I'm fine. Listen to my wife. My wife will tell you that I'm fine. Why am I getting arrested? You're not arrested. I'm I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, you said you were driving a bus, right? Yes. All right. I drive a school bus for the last five years. Okay. okay. Yes. I don't yes. know you're And I'm getting to... arrested for what? You're being detained right now so we can figure out what happened. We're not doing anything right now besides trying to get information, okay? You were there. How, I, how was I? You were there. I saw you there yesterday. I saw you there. I didn't work yesterday, so yeah. I don't know how you yeah, did Yeah, whatever. I saw you there yesterday. Yeah, why are you guys holding me? So you don't Wait, what? I'm not going to go you away. You ran out of the ambulance. I'm not going to go away. Not gonna away. No, her. no, no, no. I'm not going to go away. Why are you holding me? I'm not going to fall. What do you have all over your back? 
my back. Oh, uh, this is my, 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 what I wear when I drive a bus. No, but it looks I, like you I, got one, puke one, or... Whatever, sir, okay? I drive a bus for five years. Holy mackerel. In case you missed it, there really is something on his shirt that could be described as a puke stain. Pretty disturbing, huh? Just imagine an old drunk guy like this with puke all over his clothes, driving your kids to school every day. It's like every parent's worst nightmare. And although he claimed to care for the safety of the kids he was driving, the evidence says otherwise. All I cared was my kids were not hurt. And you know what? And all the parents showed up at the bus stop and said the same thing. Hey, you know what? Hey. And I had students and two parents that told me that they were sick of me. So I'm going to go to jail now? Hey, man. Come on. Come on. I'm a good guy, man. All I care about is my children on the bus. That's all I care about. You know what? Arrest me. If you want, just arrest me. Okay? Just arrest me. Just arrest me. Just arrest me. Go ahead. I don't care. I don't care. All I cared was, was my kids on the bus were, were, uh, were safe. That's all I cared about. You want to arrest me? Arrest me. Just the fact that he would drink any alcohol, knowing that he had to drive the school bus, is sickening. Not only did he have one drink, but he apparently had many, because he reeks of alcohol. Yet when confronted about it, he denied having any drinks at all. I want to tell you what I'm observing. When I talked to you earlier and asked you a couple questions, I smell an odor of an alcohol beverage coming Not at you. all. Okay. Not at all. Okay, with that being said. Not at all. I understand. With that being said, are you willing to do field sobriety exercises? I already did one this morning. You did field sobriety exercises this morning? Yeah, because I had an accident yesterday. Yes. I had an accident yesterday. A guy hit me. Okay. A guy hit me. Okay. Okay. Sir. Sir. Are sir. You sir. Sir. Are you willing to do field sobriety exercises? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. You have that right. You okay. So you're going to arrest me? Okay. So here, are you going to arrest I'm, me? Sir, I need you to listen to me. Okay. You have the right. You have the right to refuse to do field sobriety exercises. That's fine. But under under adverse Come consequences, on. Come on. I can make sir. an arrest for DUI. Sir. Wide. Sir. Okay. Sir. All right. So you know what? Are you really, are you really thinking that I'm? I like it when cops have this no-nonsense approach. The officer tried reasoning with the suspect several times. When he realized it wasn't doing any good, he just proceeded to the next step with no hesitation. A subsequent breathalyzer test showed that the driver's blood alcohol level was 0.32, which is four times over the legal limit. He was charged with 14 counts of child neglect, DUI with a person under the age of 18, and resisting arrest. He was about to take a plea deal, but he showed up to court impaired. He was sentenced to a year and a half in prison and another three and a half years of probation. Safe to say, he's probably not going to be driving a school bus anytime soon. Now it's time to get serious. We're about to witness the arrest of Jeffrey Gaston, a 29-year-old man from Orlando, Florida, accused of committing at least five armed robberies. His target, 7-Eleven stores, just like the one he was working in at the time of his arrest. The man is clearly dangerous, so the officers first discuss over the radio about how to approach the arrest. He's dealing with Lotto right now, but OPD was kind of hesitant to take him right now. They wanted kind of to wait a little bit, but I kind of said we kind of need to do this now rather than waiting. Yeah, I agree. If we can take him away from the house and away from that car, it would probably be best. All right, I don't see anybody at the cash register, so whenever you guys are ready. Before these guys start rolling, let me get you up to speed on Gaston's robberies. On September 12th, 2022, at 4.30 a.m., he robbed a 7-Eleven store in Orlando, holding the employee at gunpoint. On September 26th, he robbed another store, this time in Altamont Springs, where he stole only $73. Not satisfied, he robbed another one in Oviedo the same morning, that time managing to get $300. On October 5th, he perpetrated another robbery, and on the 12th, he returned to the same store he started the spree with. But now, it was all about to end. How's it going, man? Hey, Jeffrey, right? Me? Yeah, you. No, I'm good. Put your hands behind your back, man. What? What did I do? You're under arrest. For what? Put your, Put your hands hand behind your back. back. We'll explain to you in a second, all right? Do me a favor. Hey, what am I hey, hey, hey. What Jeff, did I do? Jeffrey, I'm put the chicken wing down. Okay. Put, okay. Just, just put it down on the counter. We'll wipe it up. Chris, you got cuffs. Explain to you in a second, all right? What did I do? We're gonna. Hey, Jeffrey. Take a deep breath. You're taking me to jail. What did I do? We're not I'm at work. We're not taking you to jail. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. We're going to explain to you in a second. The officers are being very cautious. They know they're dealing with an armed robber. And when you look at the size of Mr. Gaston, he could easily take down several cops if he wanted to. Imagine what this guy could do to them. Luckily, he seems to be relatively calm for now. Oh, my goodness. What did I do? Jeffrey, we're, a detective is going to talk to you. I can assure you that. 
They're gonna come talk to you. You said you're not taking me to jail. Why did I have your handcuffs on? What did I do? You are being detained at this time. That's what you are. You're being detained okay. at this time. You don't have to arrest me. What is going on? Just take a deep breath. No, sir. Tell take, me what's going I on. I told you. You are being detained yes. for an investigation. You have an arrest warrant. Investigation for an arrest warrant? For what? We're, what did I do? If you start acting a fool, it's not going to pull well for you. Sir, I'm not acting a fool. I'm okay. not resisting. Obviously. I know you're not. I, I want know to know what why are, I did. Why are you yelling? Because what? I want to know what I did. I just told you. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to sit down and talk to you. Oh, my goodness. You said I have an arrest warrant. The officer told Jeffrey that it wouldn't go well for him if he started to act like a fool. Even though that is true, the cop was probably just trying to protect himself and his colleagues. Even with the cuffs, if this Goliath decides to resist, there's going to be hell to pay. Luckily, he seems to be cooperative, and he's got other things to be concerned about, like what's cooking in the oven. We didn't write the warrant. so we I understand, but I want to know who wrote the warrant. Like, the I'm not on probation. The, 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 I have not been in trouble. Okay. I'm not on probation. The detective, the detective that did this is going to come speak to you. And he's going to give Jeffrey Gaston his opportunity to speak to him. And you will be able to get every single one of your questions answered. I can... And I, I'm a man of my word, Jeff. Sir, there's something in the oven. Okay. Well, even though I expected worse, I'm glad Mr. Gaston didn't resist and nobody got hurt. Unlike all those Karens we've witnessed on this channel, shouting, screaming, biting, and scratching, this hulk of a man proved to be a real gentle giant. So now would be an opportune time to inform you that the gun Gaston used in the robberies was merely a really convincing looking toy. The officers later discovered that a few days prior to the first robbery, he actually searched online for a quote, realistic looking toy gun so he's actually not a violent person at all this is a good way to start the day what time do you usually get off i'm already supposed to be off I'm supposed to be off now is that seven or seven o'clock what uh what shift do you work here third shift third yeah how long have you been working here for a very long time yeah for years i think i saw you because we were the shooting here in the parking lot probably yes what was that like six no it was like the beginning of yeah. As the cops take a stroll down memory lane, Jeffrey looks around. This is probably one of the last times he'll be able to do this for years to come, considering the gravity of his crimes. Toy gun or not, his crimes are considered armed robberies, and this is not going to go down nicely for him. Also, they intend to take his car as well, and Jeffrey spots them sealing it with tape. Evidence. So we just seal and tow the car. So then that way we know that nobody's gone into the car and taken anything out. So what do you mean? I can have somebody come pick my car. I don't need this. No, we're, ta we're, we're taking your car. Why are you taking my car? Because we are. It's evidence. It's evidence for you. Okay. It's evidence for what? Jeffrey, calm down. No, you're telling me to calm down. You're taking my you car. You want to put him in the car? I don't know, sir. Please don't do that. Okay. But you're, we're, just... we're going to wait for an SUV to get here so you can fit in the car. Okay, but you're okay. You're taking my car as evidence. Number yes, one. sir. Yes, sir. Number two. Yes, sir. You're not telling me what's going on. And I told you. You, you told are... me. Yeah, you told me I'm being arrested. You said I have an arrest warrant. Correct. You say you, you, you know what it is, but you don't want to tell me. You said the detectives. The detectives are going to come and talk to you. I can okay. promise you that. Or Jeffrey then gets upset because he won't be able to go to work without his car. So he's either completely unaware that he's getting arrested for armed robbery, or he just can't bear the thought of it. In the end, Jeffrey was taken to jail and charged. The judge sentenced him to seven years in a federal prison for committing five armed robberies. In all, he stole less than $2,000 in total. If you ever get dumb enough to drink and drive, the last person you want to see is a police officer. But this DoorDash driver did something even more stupid. She somehow managed to crash into the gate of a police station and then tried to flee but failed. Here's the moment the cops caught up with her. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here is Jeffrey. Get out of the car. Step over here. The driver is 19-year-old Samara Burns. She's clearly very intoxicated, but at least she's not acting like a Karen and making a mess. She seems to be pretty shaken by what happened and willing to cooperate. Seeing that she's shaking from the cold and probably the shock, the officers try to find some clothing in her trunk, but it looks like a hoarder's mess. Have a seat. I know you're cold. Okay, we'll I was to about to say, here. like, is it okay if I just sit in, like, the warmth? Because it's cold as hell. That's it. Like, I'm about a block away. I just, it's cold as f Like, yeah. do I just sit? Yeah, just hang out for a minute. It's not going to be long, okay? I promise. Okay, okay. It's just. I know that it's cold. It's We're cold. out here with you.
Do people really think that living near the place where they got caught by the police can somehow exonerate them from the crime? I've seen this happen a lot, and this is not the last time Samara will point to the fact that she lives just nearby. Anyway, an officer soon approaches to explain a few things. All right, Samara, I'm Officer Conchas, the Albuquerque Police Department. Hi. Um, do you understand why we stopped you? Um, no, but can you tell me? So the reason we stopped you is because uh, the supervisor right here, that right. was just parked right here, right. saw you ram our gate into our substation. Okay. Right, because I was gonna go take an order and then. All right, so he. Right. So he saw you ram the gate, and then when he pulled you over, we saw that open container in the center console. Okay. Open container. Yeah, the my Tart lemonade. I don't have a my Tart lemonade. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, are you willing to conduct my field sobriety test? Yes. You are. Yes. Sir. Okay. In case you were wondering, Mike makes spiked lemonade, which has around 5% alcohol content. That's similar to a beer, but less potent than spirits. Either way, it can get you really drunk. And if the officers did find the open container, there's no use in denying it. But our brave DoorDash driver is not phased by this, and she's seemingly not afraid of the field sobriety tests. Let's see how she performs. Stand right here. Right here? Okay, so you're gonna place your feet together, okay. your arms at your side. Okay. You're gonna look straight ahead, okay? I'm gonna give you, stay in that position. Okay. I'm gonna give you a period of instruction. Do not move, okay? Okay. So, you're gonna look at the tip of my finger. Okay. You're gonna follow the tip of my finger with your eyes only. Do not move your head. Okay. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. The officer then performs the eye movement test, also called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Contrary to belief, he's not paying attention to her head moving or not. What he's looking for is an involuntary twitching of the eye. With normal humans, this movement happens when the eye passes the 45 degree angle. But when someone is impaired by alcohol or drugs, the eye starts twitching before that. It's difficult to say really, but I think she passed it. Then it's time for the walk and turn test. Imagine an imaginary line, right? Okay. Can you do that? Yes. An imaginary line? On the ground? Yes. All right. You're going to take nine heel to toe steps. Heel to toe? Yes. So okay. see how my heel is touching my toe? Yes. You're going to take nine of these. Once you get to your ninth step, you're going to do small steps. What is that? Right? So you're going to do several small steps like this. In a circle? In a circle to turn back around. And you're going to do another nine heel to toe steps. One, two. Okay? okay? With her arms at her sides, Samara attempted to do this test, but she couldn't even manage to stand in the starting position, let alone perform all those steps. She tried to avoid it at first, but the officer noticed and made her work for it. Come back here. Yes, sir. Stand right there. Okay. Face my car. Okay. Put your hands to your side. Yes. Put your right foot in front of your, in front of your left with right. your heel touching your toe. Like? With your heel touching your toe, like this. Okay, like this. So... The officer repeats his instructions, but basically, she's just struggling to stand still as it is. There's no way she could have performed the one leg stand, but let's cross that bridge when or if we even get there. Samara struggles to keep a straight line and ends up on the curb. Is that fair? I can't help you. You can't help me how? Are you done with the test? I mean, you said nine, right? Have you completed the test? All I know from here is that I'm about a block away. What does that have to do with anything? Well, I guess when you're drunk, all kinds of stupid things come to mind. By now, she probably knows that the jig is up. There's no use in hiding the fact that she's inebriated, but maybe she can downplay it a little. I'm not gonna, like, try to fool you guys. I'm not gonna try to lie to you guys and pretend like I'm 110% sober. Like, I'm not trying to be the kind of person that's like, okay, I'm good. Samara, are you done with your test? Yes, sir. Your next test, you're going to stand with your feet together like this. Right. You're going to bring one foot up. Which foot? Don't move. I'm giving you instructions. You need to pay attention. Okay. Okay? Whichever foot you would like, you can raise it up off the ground, point your toe out, put your arms at your side, while staring at your tip of your toe, 
right? As usual, the officers tried the one-legged stand test. I think it's pretty obvious that Samara is intoxicated and that there's no way she can stand on one leg for longer than a few seconds. However, the officers always try to get as much evidence as possible. So what do you say about this one? When she started waving her hands, I thought she was about to fly away. You might even say she tried to pass the test with flying colors. All right, Samara, how much have you had to drink today? Uh, a shot. shot and a half? Yes, sir. Are you supposed to be drinking? Honestly, no. I'm about, I can see my house from here. It's honestly, can I be honest with you? That's what I ask people to do, yes. So basically, my boyfriend had a work thing, I guess. Like, the lady that he works with gave us a bunch of furniture. We just moved into our house. So he just felt obligated to go and show face, basically, because she gave us furniture. Her daughter is having a 21st birthday. Mm. And she's literally like a block down from here. That's All right, Samara, so go ahead and turn around, face away from me. Place okay. your hands behind your back. Right now, you're being placed under arrest for driving while intoxicated. Okay, cool. Well, you're under arrest. That's one of the most original cop lines I've heard so far. Samara doesn't resist at all, even as the officers do a search before placing her in the squad car. All in all, she seems to be a decent kid who did a stupid thing. Every time she addressed the cops, she was very polite. After the officer briefly explained procedures, Samara was taken to jail and charged with aggravated driving while intoxicated. She's just a 19-year-old kid, and hopefully she's learned the valuable lesson of never slamming into a police station gate while intoxicated. It looks like fast food restaurants can be a real source of frustration. Sometimes it's the customers who get mad, and other times, like in this case, it's the employees. The police were dispatched to a Captain D's restaurant when the manager started having trouble with one of her employees by the name of Takanisha Hubbard. We got guests in here. She been this her ruling, cussing, in her phone. That's her? Yeah. So what's what's the problem today? Because I'm sending her home. Okay. Okay. She started cussing. She threw water and got on me. Okay. I got you. Um, and she, she got my cell phone in her hand. I okay. need my cell phone. And she wouldn't give it back? You told her to give it She snatched out in here? She threatened me. It was on the counter. She got it. She won't give it to him. She threatened me. She you know, I just got it. I ain't did nothing. You don't got to help me say I'm right here. Okay. I'm right here. So anyway, so, she asked me, I'm going to my DM, and when you want to talk to me, I'm going to talk to you because I told her to call you. Boy, oh boy, this one's going to be a handful, isn't she? The manager explains that they want to press charges and that she wants her cell phone back. The officer enters to retrieve her phone. Notice how the manager tries her best to ignore the loudmouth employee. Who can blame her, right? The worker is loud and obnoxious, and the officer tries to get her out as soon as possible so he can calm the situation down. All right, let's, let's step outside, okay? Come on, let's go outside. Can you get my stuff? I don't need any folks for it. I just to okay. go pat down my Can coat. somebody grab her stuff? Can somebody? What you got there? My coat. Where your coat is? Back there. She know. If there's one thing I can say about Takanisha Hubbard right off the bat is that she speaks really fast. She's like a version of Boomhauer from King of the Hill. Come to think of it, even he would have been proud of Takanisha. She threw water at me. She sent me home for no reason. Everybody seen that I was working. When nobody backing me up, when the line wrapped around, they been doing that shit. I've been here. And I Takanisha is leaving as soon as she gets her stuff and her Pepsi. You can't go home without a Pepsi, right? The officer leaves his partner to interview the manager and other witnesses, and he escorts the angry young lady outside. What's going on today? And then she got mad because I told her that I won't get transferred. That you were what getting transferred? I won't. I had no answer. Can she get my? Can she get? She told me. Okay, for one, I've been we've been working. Mm -hmm. So like about forty. I guess I said about forty five minutes ago. Yeah, I want to talk to the camera because I want to see me. Okay. About forty five minutes ago. Oh, I'll be kicked out. But about forty. I know. I have it. My first impression was that Takanisha is a loudmouth, probably not very nice to work with. However, the more she explains the situation in the restaurant, I find myself liking her more and more. Even even though I have trouble understanding what she's saying most of the time. She was like, well, I got a problem with people working with you and saying you're aggressive. So I was like, well, Natasha, um, coming from a manager point of view, because I'm a manager also, if you got a problem, if somebody tell you it's something that I did wrong, mm -hmm. you should tell me or let me know what I need to change in order for me to grow. Mm -hmm. I was like, so that's weird. I was like, but we ain't even got to talk about it, because you know I'm still here working, and that's how I said Mm -hmm. I went on Even though I like her for being hardworking, assuming her story is true, I can understand why people have trouble working with her. She seems so amped up all the time, and most people find that to be emotionally draining. But no one can blame her for sticking up for herself. Now
Now, let's get to the alleged water assault part. So I'm like, okay, if she says she's going to build and on fire, I was like, well, you got me up. So I was walking back to the clock out, and she blocked out the clock, and we was in front of the floor, and the bucket flew, and I flipped it back. This way. So how did it, where was the bucket at? I right down on the table where we all were. So how did it flip? What you mean, how did it flip? I hit the table. And so you hit the table? Yeah, and it flew. They got cameras, don't ask for it. They want to know my daughter asked me, and she picked it up. She picked it up with her hand and threw it. It flew on my end, but it, she was thrown at me. So, so, so she tried to throw it at you? She picked it up and threw it. Yeah, she picked it up and threw it with her hand. I'm sorry for this. No, so but I just want to make sure it's she, clear. Let's, it's the bucket when it's me. I flipped it, okay? So you like, flipped so you, you want me to show you a duck on the car? So did you hit the car or like you hit the car? Like, yeah, okay. hard though, because I'm angry. Uh -huh. She picked the after that, there was apparently a scuffle between the two women. Now, Takanisha's story sounds compelling, and it doesn't look as if she was lying about what happened. But, according to the information the other officer gathered, there are some things she left out, like the part where she threatened her co-workers. What did you do? Y'all let me know. Theft, terroristic drugs, simple battery. Y'all let me know. 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 Y'all yeah, so she admitted to taking the phone that it was on the counter, she grabbed it and she walked around and then sat next to it. Yeah. She said that with the water, it was on the table, so she went back there to go get her jacket or get her stuff or to clock out and they wouldn't let her clock out. The lady was standing, the lady was standing in front of it, so she like banged the table. They had a bucket of water, and the water, um, I guess, it splashed on everyone. And then she said that's when the lady grabbed the bucket and tried to throw it at her, and it ended up getting on, like, everybody. Well, even, like, they are like, she's trying to throw the tea things. Like, the other lady said she was trying to push her out of there. She was, like, actively threatening, like, she's going to um, come back and whoop her ass. Gonna, that she's gonna have to get a restraining order against her. She's gonna find all of her tires and everything. I mean, we have we have enough for sure. Okay. Obviously, the officers have a clear reason to arrest the very loud Takanisha Hubbard. I mean, you can hear her hollering in the back the entire time these two officers were talking. Luckily, she doesn't resist. Although one could consider her obnoxious jabbering potentially an assault on the ears. I mean, what's that? You're gonna go to jail, okay? What I want to do for. Taking her phone. I okay. didn't take her phone, okay. but I had my stuff okay. up. Okay, listen. Wait, before you send me well, to jail, wait, let me get my out of me. I got some weed. Okay, I'll get on. Right, we're not worried about that. So put your hands behind your back. Listen. All right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. Takanisha had other stuff in her pockets too, it seems. She was eventually charged with possession of Schedule II controlled substances, theft by taking, simple battery, possession of less than one ounce of marijuana, and terroristic threats and acts. A Wendy's restaurant in Florida was the target of a crazy scam in 2017 when one of their managers decided to break bad. It all started when their employee, Dante Wilson, called the Flagler County Sheriff's Office claiming he was robbed while attempting to deposit $900 to Wells Fargo. Deputies arrived at the scene, but something seems fishy about Dante's story. He claimed he called the police twice, once immediately after the robbery and a second time when he got back to Wendy's. Called in twice? Yeah. All right. I just talked to our dispatch. He's only got one call recorded from you. Okay. Well, I know for a fact that their system's not gonna. Their 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 system's not gonna lie. So I want you to think about it. It. We've got a document that you only called 911 once. Is there something that you want to, if there's something else you want to talk about, or is there something else you want to say about this? No, there really isn't. Okay. And this happened about 10 o'clock? Yes, sir. Okay, and where did you go? You came straight back here? I came straight back here. You came straight back here. So you dropped to the, at the bank. You were at the bank at 10 o'clock when this happened. Yeah. Right at the start, the way this guy just let go of the topic of two calls rang an alarm bell in my head. If he was being honest, he would have said something more. This felt like he tried to sweep it under the rug and just move on. And that's strange. It's obvious that the cop doesn't believe him, and he might have a good reason for that. Are you certain about that? I'm 100% certain. I came in straight, and it was sitting right there, and I told him, it's okay. like, this is what happened. Yeah, okay, I'm going to tell you right now. I've got guys reviewing the video from 9.30 to 10.30. Okay. okay? If something did indeed happen, it's going to show it. If something didn't happen, it's also going to show that. All right? You need to be honest with me, 100%. 100%. 
exactly okay, because things are not adding. Exactly I'm going right to tell you right now, I haven't even looked at the video, but things are not adding up. I am telling you this. I'm looking straight at you in the eye and telling you things are not adding up. That's crazy. Because I, okay. I don't have no reason to lie, honestly. I'm not saying you and do. Just I'm just that saying that. I've been here so long and I've never had a money problem at one time. Dante further explains that he's just recently been appointed manager and that he's only done two or three money deposit drops so far. There are two things I noticed so far. When he looks at the officer, he kind of has that deer caught in the headlights look. And if he was really just robbed and the cop doesn't seem to believe him, I'd expect him to be more emotional and really try to convince everyone to believe him. But he looks uncomfortable, like he just wants to get this done with as soon as possible. Will you give me a favor for me real quick? Yeah. You've given me a video Perfect. statement. I just need you to raise your right hand for me. Do you swear the video statement you've given me is the truth, seven, the truth to help you guys? Yes. State your full name and state your date of birth for me. Okay, very good. What I need you to do is just fill out this top part. Starting here, I just want you to write exactly what transpired, okay? The officer comes back a while later and swears Dante to the written statement as well. Then he attempts to get him to tell the truth once again, but this time, he subtly threatens the possibility of a perjury charge to try and motivate him. Okay, you can put your hand down. Now listen, you understand what perjury is, right? Yes. What's perjury? Um, false accusations or yeah, claims that something happened when they were getting Well, perjury's lying in court, but yeah. Okay, uh, this, now you've sworn to this, it's the same thing if, if you've misled in any way on this, it's perjury, okay? I am giving you one golden opportunity, if there's anything else that you want to add or if something happened a different way, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm trying to... Nothing happened a different way. Nothing happened a different way. And I didn't way. talk to anybody. And then it sucks that it has to be on my shift when this happens because now I'm the one held responsible for the $900, well, technically almost $1,000. And then on top of that, I can lose my job for that, being that I was responsible for that deposit. Dante sticks to his story, but it's all going to come crumbling down soon. They're basically waiting for a detective to come and take over the investigation, but the officer does his best to crack this case, even before the detective arrives. How, how would your story sound to you? If I was giving, if I was telling you the same story, how, how, would, you, how would it sound to you? Honestly, it would sound pretty crazy being that the fact that you weren't there, so if I somebody trying to explain it to you, you have to get everything in detail. And plus, I'm still shaking the bike, so I'll do the best of my ability to give you everything in detail that I know. And that's exactly what I've done. The more the officer asks, the more Dante gets confused. His story is that he decided to not use the drive-thru to make the deposit, but to go inside the bank. The robber was supposedly waiting for him outside and snatched the money from him. What I'm having a hard time with is that you, you said that you gave, you willingly gave up the money because you didn't want... After a while, yes, because at first I was like, wait a minute, what are you and, doing? Okay, and this bank was so packed. Nobody came to your aid? Nobody... No, nobody was outside. Everybody was inside. It was a lot of cars outside. And it was cars still coming in and out of that plaza period. Nobody was there outside. It was just him sitting in front. But you said the drive through well, was packed, so which would lead me to believe that. No, I didn't say the drive through was packed. So why didn't you go through the no, drive through I would just go in inside. Why? That, it was easier. But I thought, your, S S I thought your SOP was to go through the drive through but yeah, but then like I said it too, when my manager that was on duty that one day when she told me how to do it, she said she normally goes in sometimes. So the standard operating procedure is to use the drive through which is safer. Dante claims he chose to go in, but he doesn't really have a good reason why he did that. So they brought him to the bank where the alleged robbery took place. Let's see what he says there. It looks like he parked further away from the bank when there were a couple of spots available closer. And why he didn't park over those other spots. Yeah. Those other two spots were empty? Yeah. This, all three of these spots were at well, the one in the middle was that was it, and I this one. So I was waiting for the drop to go inside. Like when it was over there. Door, oh. You actually said you were saying that you parked in that far right spot. Oh, well, I can see that part. It was over here, though, that you parked. Oh, well, I think you were just that one. Like, okay. Like this one. You're 100% positive you parked right there. Dante's story slowly falls apart, but the nail in the coffin is the surveillance footage from the bank. It clearly shows Dante entering the bank, doing a transaction, and leaving. No robbery ever took place. He was charged with felony grand theft, perjury, making a false report of a non-existent crime, and a false 911 call. He was sentenced to 120 days in jail with a three-year probation, and he had to pay Wendy's back. But he learned nothing because he violated probation by using marijuana. Then he got a job as a manager of another fast food restaurant, where he stole money from the register. Some people never learn.
And now for something completely different. Let's switch over to a respected member of the medical profession. Dr. William Wright Adams is a plastic surgeon who seems to have a very disturbing hobby, which just happens to be illegal. One day, he was on his way to surgery when law enforcement decided to pull him over. It was pure luck he didn't get there in time, and you'll soon understand why. I'll explain everything, okay? What's going on? I'll explain everything, all right? That's supposed to be operating. Okay, that's fine. This is more important right now. Thank you. All right? As the doctor is put in handcuffs and secured, he's noticeably calm. It's like there's not a worry in his mind. You'd expect a noted plastic surgeon would be worried about this. Don't you think? His reputation is on the line, he might lose his job, and his career might go down the drain. Yet, he looks a bit dazed and has this aura like nothing can hurt him. Sadly, he might be right about that. Operating where at? Operating where at? You I'm plastic surgeon. Okay, where at? My office? Where's that at? The doctor is put in the squad car, and again, he doesn't resist. You would expect a man who's innocent to be outraged by this. In the meantime, the officers search his vehicle, and this is what they find. Narcotic bag. Yeah, how big is it? Um, it's just for just like a meth pipe. A pipe, uh, one in, like this big. The officers found a meth pipe and three grams of crystal meth. In case you don't believe a doctor can be a meth addict, we even managed to find secret footage of the not-so-good doctor enjoying his addiction. After searching his vehicle, the officer approaches him and attempts to read him his rights. But the doctor seems to be worried about his patient, who's probably being put under anesthesia as this is happening. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Well, I'd love to talk to you. Um, before I can ask you anything, we've got to read you your rights, okay? But I want to figure out because we're blocking a busy street right here. You're putting okay. somebody to sleep right now for okay. me to operate on. Okay. So I have to call Would you them like me to I call like them and there. tell them? Uh, or are they going to do that when you show up? Um, they're all waiting for me right now. Okay, so I'm are sorry. they doing the medicine prior to you showing up? Station probably somewhat. Usually yes, they, yes or no? Because I'll make a call over yeah, there. Yes, please call. Okay. Well, that's one patient who's about to get a nasty surprise. Just imagine going to a plastic surgeon to get your looks in top shape. They put you to sleep, and when you wake up, not only was the surgery not performed, but you find out that the surgeon who was about to cut you open is in fact a meth addict. Yep, it's not really a person you'd ever want touching you with a scalpel, right? But why did the officers decide to stop him in the first place? This news was first broken by a. ABC. And here's an excerpt from their news report. Authorities arrested Dr. William Wright Adams twice since 2020 for crystal meth possession. And as I-team investigator Adam Mulser found out, the plastic surgeon's first case was dropped. And now he's awaiting trial on his second case. After following Adams from his home, police stop him for questioning in connection with a 2021 burglary. According to a police report, the co-defendant told police Adams hired him to burglarize an ex-boyfriend's home. The report says a security camera captured Adam's vehicle and neighbors spotted a man wearing teal scrubs near the victim's house. So not only is he a meth addict, but he also pays people to burglarize his ex-boyfriend's home. Who is this guy, right? But then it gets even worse. Even though he was already arrested once in 2020, when security found meth in his backpack in the Pinellas County Justice Center, the charges were dropped. So our doctor just continued operating like nothing happened. Not even 17 months after his second arrest did the trial began. Not one person ever questioned his ability to perform surgery, and his practice is still open for business. And if you think that isn't so bad, check out this small part of an interview with his former patient. He came in and he started to draw on me, and I noticed that he smelled very much like cigarettes. It was a very, very strong smell. She says that surgery resulted in complications, additional surgeries, and painful recoveries. That was the uh, my belly button uneven, my scar up very high. As soon as I opened the binder, I said, my belly button's off center. And as I healed more and the swelling went down, I noticed a lot of unevenness where the liposuction was done. Um, and also that my scar was very, very high. Um, higher than it should be for, for something like this. Months after her initial recovery, she returned for a second procedure. They did more liposuction and they did move the scar, 
um, they had to completely open me up all over again. That time her incision was closed with 64 staples instead of sutures. And I said, um, how come you use staples that time? That was weird, you didn't use it the first time. Tiffany said Dr. Adams asked her if her wound had opened up after surgery. No, that's not me. So you feel like he got you confused with another patient? 100%, and that happened more than once. So what do you make of all this? My guess is that the doctor had solid connections in the legal system, and that's how he manages to evade the long arm of the law. In my opinion, he clearly belongs in jail, and he should never be allowed to operate again. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And in case you ever want to get some plastic surgery done, this is another valuable lesson for you today. Do your research and try to find a surgeon that's not a meth addict. I often say that a police officer's job is not easy. It's not always about risking their lives either. Sometimes it's difficult to discern who's the victim and who's the suspect. And on rare occasions such as this one, it's a little bit of both. Hey, what's going on, man? What's it going? What happened at the post office? Yeah, I show you, I show you. I don't want to lie. Look. That's her. That's her. She came in off from there. You hear her? You hit me? Look at my face. So that she came after you. Yeah, yeah. Why? I'm gonna sue then. Why because would she come after you? I, look, we, we, look, look. Okay, Why would she do that? Because we we start complaining about some package, the delivery package. So you have a package delivered to there? A, a package sent it. We got a company. We send packages every day. Okay. Like uh, dresses and everything. Who's your company? Uh, Glam hey, Let's Beba. stand in front of my car. That way we yeah. don't get hit. Glam Glam Beba. So you had a package from your company? No, it's not, it's not me. It's the other girl. It's not me. I just tried to avoid. It's not me. So you saying the female and her got into yeah. it? Yeah, she went to hit the female. Where's and get the, in the female middle. at? Huh? She left. Do you know her? So, yeah, I know her. Before we move on, have you noticed anything strange in this conversation? What struck me immediately is that the victim tried to avoid answering the question of why the postal worker would attack them. He could have said something like, who knows, she's crazy. But instead, he just let it glance off of him and showed his injuries. But let's put a pin in that for now and see what happens next. Look. Uh, you were trying to break it up? Yeah, trying to break it up. You want to get back to the... Yeah, to I'm going to talk to her in a minute. Yeah, please. You can do it in person because, yeah. like... I tell you, I'm leaving, but I come back with my lawyer with a suit because this is unprofessional. So look at my face too. Yeah. So I start talking with the lady. And I think she's new because I never see her before. So there's a little bit of broken English going on, but I think we all get the picture. The guy and his girlfriend came to the post office to deliver a package and inquire about the missing one. Apparently, the clerk was rude, so they asked for the manager. That's when the physical attack happened. So let's go deeper into that. So I need to talk to the manager. So please bring me a manager. Bring me a manager because like I'm waiting right here. She came back, ring the bell, and say stay at the door. I go to the blue door on the side, and I stare for a, for a lady, a blonde girl lady came out, opened the half a, a door, and she started getting in contact with the package and everything, tracking number and all that. Yeah. And she came back from the from the counter to that door to say, hey, you don't pay attention to this m because they and she slammed the door on my face. That's and the video you showed she coming uh, out. That's towards. before. That's okay. before. She slammed the door on my face and this lady this lady right here was holding the door. You see that the lady I was talking to. You, you see, she tried, and she came out again. You can look. As the second officer looks at the video, one thing keeps bugging me. Where's his girlfriend? If she was also assaulted, why is she not here? And it appears as if one of the officers is pondering the same thing. So she came out to hit my, my, my girl. So she, Where's your girl at? So she left. I tell you, left because I don't want to use. Did she leave on foot or in a vehicle or what? On a vehicle. So, okay. So, Mira, what I've gathered, I'm about to ask to call the police again. So you went there to get the package. They didn't have the package. They wouldn't give you the information you needed for yeah, the package. Yeah. So after that, I, I start talking with the blonde lady that you see yeah, right there, yeah. and then she start helping us, problem solved. Who's this female you were with? Oh, uh, my girl. Yeah. What's her name? So I want to say my name, like her name. Okay. I want her to come. Okay. I mean, we may need her to tell us what she saw. Yeah. I Did tell she her. get attacked too? Huh? Did she get? 
she get she attacked too. She, she get she get the hand and slam with you on the floor. Like she's also a victim. So we need yeah. probably don't. Yeah, I wanna but, I'll, I'll let her know where like, she at? to come. I don't know. Like she getting in the car. Where do y'all stay at? Huh? Where do y'all stay at? I stay right here in Dallas. She stay in in Atlanta. Yeah, obviously this guy is avoiding calling her to come back. There are many reasons why that might be the case, but it's a can of worms I'd rather not open. So let's get back to the assault. It's pretty apparent that the guy is distressed, and that's perfectly reasonable. Imagine having a business and sending packages all over the country. Then, not only do your packages go missing, but the clerk at the post office mouths off, makes rude comments, and even assaults you. This guy is so sure of his side of the story, he intends to come back with his lawyers. So, she came back from the counter to tell her, like, hey, this m****, don't pay attention on that, and I slam the door on my face. I get back, and I try to get the video, and she opened the door, I said, hey, you don't call us m****. Okay, we are just a client, and that's not your job. You get unprofessional. And I say, I come back tomorrow to talk to you. If you are the manager, because I need this with my lawyers. Okay. Because I'm gonna sue them. Yeah. I ask them. If not, you see the video. They're gonna give me the video, of the of the place too. Okay. So okay. you see, like, what's going on? Because I'm gonna sue them. By pure logic, it would seem the guy is telling the truth. He's obviously convinced that the surveillance video will prove just what he's saying is true. But reality often turns out to be much different from what we expect because there's always two sides to each story well here's what i gotta figure out i got conflicting stories okay i spoke with a manager up there before i came down here uh -huh. and he was saying that you and your girlfriend uh -huh. were coming across the counter towards them uh, so yeah. i got two different stories so they're gonna show me the video or you can yeah, ask them can, to show the video yeah. and i can come to you and wait outside so i'm not lying so let's go inside the post office and meet the horrible postal worker who assaulted her clients just for inquiring the way the victim described what happened she must be a very angry person right why else would she attack them for no reason you want to step over here so what happened i was trying to tell the customers that their package wasn't here so they i tried to tell the customers that their package wasn't here so then they got upset and they started getting loud and disrespectful and i said you're being disrespectful i can't help you so i let them calm down and i started getting the other customers then they started yelling, get us a manager, get us a manager. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, y'all are being really rude. So I rang the bell three times. They went to go talk to the manager. So then the guy is talking to my other supervisor out the door. And I was like, tell them to not talk to me like that. So then the dude started yelling, bitch, you bitch. So I went outside. And I was like, who are you calling the bitch? You don't, you don't have to be disrespectful. He got in my face, put his camera in my face. So I took his phone and put it and threw it on the ground. Then he mushed me. So then all I remember, I just saw black and I hit him back. I'm not really sure what mushed means, but as expected, the clerk's account is somewhat different from what the supposed victim was saying just a minute ago. If she's telling the truth, the clients were the initial aggressors, at least verbally. Even so, I don't think a clerk is supposed to follow them out of the post office and berate them for being rude, especially when the supervisor was already there and took over the conversation but that wasn't the end of it not by a long shot then his girlfriend she jumped on me and i flipped him but when i flipped i ended up on the ground she was on top of me and he was pulling my hair he was hitting me and she was hitting me so they were both jumping me at the same time and that's it okay are you managing yeah i came well, out here everybody was on the floor okay. <laughs> everybody's on the ground and i just she tried to that, pull up a uh, car I, can, I heard she, one thing that was wrong well, she should have came out the door it seems that the manager agrees with me. I get that being a clerk can be tough, but the fact of the matter is, you deal with a lot of people. Some of them will be kind, others will not. But it's not the clerk's job to teach anyone manners, right? I do sympathize with her, but she kind of escalated the situation. The manager says that she didn't really see how it started. So all I heard was screaming, was Keisha, they fighting? I jumped up and come out, and when I came out, everybody was already on the ground, and I'm just trying to, you know, pull everybody apart. Okay. Try to get the situation calmed down. So what? I mean, he said he came in to get a package. Do you, what? What do you know about that? Is the package yeah, here? Yeah, package, the package was returned, and I guess it must be a customs package. And so you know, once it go back to customs, good luck. Yeah. Trying to get it. Yeah. So I'm not sure what was in the package or why customers, because was it a customs package? It, yes, ma'am. It was coming back, but it wasn't here. And I was just trying to tell them that oh, their, so package, yeah. so their package was being returned and they got upset. At this point, I'd say that the clerk is at fault. Mostly, the client has the right to be rude because of the inconvenience. But Regina, the clerk, had no right to take someone's phone and throw it on the ground. However, according to her, it was the man who initiated the physical contact first. Regina. So I went and spoke with him, 
and he has video footage based on what happened. He came in here, he got upset about the package not being here. He asked for a manager. He said he was called a bunch of names by you. Uh, he then showed the video of you coming out the door attacking him. Okay. Is that when you hit him? Is that when no, you said you blacked no. out? You no, because he put his hands on me first. Because okay. he had his phone in my head. He had his phone in my face. So I took his phone and threw it, then he pushed me. And that's when I attacked him. I never put his so hands on his phone was in your face and yes, you took sir. it and I threw took it, it and then he pushed it. you? Yes, sir. And okay. then the female, she came and she pushed me. And when I grabbed her, we flipped and she started hitting me. And then the dude started punching me in my side. Okay. And they were both tattooing me. Okay. Jeez, this turned out to be a real mess. Not sure what to make of it, though I still think Regina overstepped her authority here and escalated the matter. But I am curious to know what you guys think. Was she at fault, or did the clients make the mistake of messing with the wrong postal worker? In the end, the post ended up trespassing the client from their office, and Regina got charged with simple battery. Do you think that was fair? So, if you had a business, and you had to choose one, and only one of the employees from today to work for you, who would it be? Let me know in the comments, and explain why you would choose that person. Thanks for joining me today, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.